Hi, this is class four of You on Mission. Uh, these, these videos are not so much recaps, but really trying to take the main point of what each lesson, each class was supposed to be about and, and reaffirming or emphasizing that main point. We've learned about God and, and his love for humanity and the mission that God has, that, that he wants all of us to be reconciled to him. And then he, once we are reconciled to him, he uses us as people to, to be sent out and that we would be God's appeal uh, to the rest of mankind. Come and be reconciled with God. We are God's ambassadors. And so in that journey, we want to look first to the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? He is the author and perfecter of our faith. So we see uh, Jesus did this well. Uh, what did he do? And what are the things that he did that we can copy, that we can adopt in our own lives? So first and foremost, last week, we saw that Jesus prayed. He, before he went out to make disciples, he prayed. He prayed to God for God's guidance, God's direction, that he would speak the words that God told him to speak, and he would do the things that he saw God doing. But then also that he prayed for those disciples. Who should he call? Who should be his disciples? He prayed for their protection. And when he was leaving them, he prayed that God would keep them and, and carry them along so that they could carry out the mission. So Jesus prayed. Now, what we're going to see today is that Jesus lived the curious life. He lived a life that evoked question, evoked curiosity. And that's a really important thing, especially for us. Now, I wanted to go in first and just talk about some of the things that Jesus did, and then I want to talk about why that's important. So what did Jesus do that created curiosity? Maybe a couple of things Jesus did that would be harder for us to emulate. Maybe some could teach in a way that Jesus taught. Uh, later on in this class, we're going to talk about Jesus asking questions and Jesus telling stories. So those are certainly th devices that he used in his teaching that were effective. But when Jesus taught, Jesus taught in a way that people, the crowds, would often react and say, like the scripture tells us, that they were amazed by his teaching. The other thing that Jesus did that might be harder for us to emulate is Jesus had this power, right? He, he healed people of their illnesses. He cast out demons. He did miracles, right? Like water to wine and feeding 5,000. Uh, so those are things that are harder for us to do in today's age. But there are things we can do that would be in the vein of that powerful authoritative teaching or the power of the, the miracles. Hopefully those things are not relying on our own power, but Jesus was able to do those things because of his reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit. So that is probably kind of taking that, not the specifics of what Christ did, but in the same way that we looked at how Jesus prayed, we can look at the general idea of Jesus was relying on God's direction and God's power to, to, to drive his ministry and his mission. And we need to simulate that same thing. If we're going to live a life that's questionable and raise curiosity, we can have a power that is unique that some, and do things that get people's attention, but we have to first rely on the Holy Spirit. If we kind of get into things that might be easier for us to simulate that Jesus did or copy, uh, then we can get into things like his compassion and his love for people, right? That we see that, that Jesus, obviously the pinnacle of that is that he died for people. And he says to his disciples that the greater love is no man than this, that he lays down his life for his friend. And, and we can do that. Obviously, it doesn't mean taking a bullet for someone or hanging on a cross for someone, but in our everyday lives, we can die to ourselves and that we can live for other people. We can live for God. That's what he's calling us to do. Uh, but, but we lay down our lives for other people. We make them first. We humble ourselves. And we kind of have a love and compassion that is unique to this world. Jesus did things like he touched a leper uh, and, and he, he said, let the children come to me. So oftentimes people in society that were cast out or maybe not touched or not looked upon, Jesus saw those people and he, and he interacted with those people. Uh, and that leads us to the next thing that we can do is that Jesus was highly countercultural. Jesus, uh, you know, probably John chapter four and in his interaction with the woman at the well is a great example of that. He was a Jew and she was a Samaritan. So, so there was uh, no love lost between those groups, and he divides that. He, he goes through that wall to talk to her. And then not only was she a Samaritan, but she was a woman. 
And we can see by the disciples' reaction when they see Jesus talking to her, like, why are you talking to that woman alone? You know, like that was a no-no. And so we can think of what are some appropriate <laughs> cultural uh, norms that we can counter, that we can go against that are going to raise people's eyebrows, that are going to make people want to ask questions. Because essentially, this questionable life, it gives us an audience. And the third thing uh, that I think that we can latch on to is Jesus' holiness. Now, maybe not to the level of perfection that Jesus lived, but Jesus does say, be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. And, and so what does that perfection look like? What does that holiness look like? Uh, that can be emulated. And again, go back to the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus tells us what it looks like. He says things like, go the extra mile, and if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. Christians sometimes rebel against this because we feel like, oh, we'll just become doormats for the world and we'll be taken advantage of. Well, who cares? <laughs> what, we, what we need to do is we need to be in a position where when we do that amongst people, um, you know, the, there's always going to be people that are looking to take advantage and are looking for doormats, and they might find you. But there's going to be other people that when they see you turn the other cheek and they see you go the extra mile and they see you live out the other principles of Jesus' teaching, that is going to raise their eyebrows. That is going to make them curious. I mean, with all of these things, Jesus says, if we live as light, the darkness is going to hate the light. He, te he tells people that they'll be persecuted and hated because of him. That's unavoidable. Uh, but what we're trying to do is live a life like Jesus lived so that the people that do have questions, the people that are looking for God and looking for answers, will see us as being different and they will want to follow, and they will want to ask us, and they will want to get answers from us. And then we can lead them to Jesus and tell them about Jesus.